Hello everyone, Alan Sens here, and welcome to this segment on the world's nuclear arsenals, part one. In this segment, we're going to look at essentially the question of who has what and how much. And in technical terminology, this is called the nuclear force structure or nuclear force posture of a nuclear armed state. And this is important because the question of how many warheads a country has and how many delivery systems it has is a real big part of the global politics of nuclear weapons. It's a big part of arms control negotiations and it's a big part of the question of how a nuclear war might start. So in this segment we're going to look at the arsenals of the established or so-called officially recognized nuclear weapon states. Okay, let's get started. So here are the learning objectives for this segment. By the time we're done, you should be familiar with the approximate number of nuclear warheads in the arsenals of the officially recognized nuclear armed states, and you should be familiar with the approximate number and type of delivery systems possessed by each officially recognized nuclear armed state. Now, on the face of it, taking inventory ought to be an easy task, right? You just start counting stuff. But when you start trying to count nuclear weapons, you encounter a lot of problems. The first challenge is secrecy. Some states are more forthcoming with their nuclear stockpiles than others, and so counting comes down to educated guesswork and intelligence estimates. The second challenge is how you count warheads and weapon systems. Do you count only those warheads that are actively deployed on a delivery system and ready for use? Or do you also count warheads that are inactive? Or in other words, are stored separately from the delivery system? Or maybe in reserve? Or have been retired? Or are waiting dismantlement? For delivery systems, the big counting problem is many systems are dual-use systems. That is, they can be used to deliver both conventional and nuclear payloads. So that makes it really hard to know how many of any given type of delivery system ought to be counted as a nuclear delivery system, or not. Now, we're going to simplify things a bit by using this template. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the warheads that a country has and divide them into deployed and inactive for a total. And then we'll have the range, a yield range of the warheads, and then a total megatonnage uh, estimate for that country's arsenal. Then we'll look at how many intercontinental ballistic missiles that country might have. Uh, these are missiles with a range of over 5,500 kilometers. We'll look at the number of medium range ballistic missiles a country has the number of bombers and strike aircraft it has, and the number of ballistic missile submarines and submarine-launched ballistic missiles that are deployed in those submarines. Now, we could look at cruise missiles, but cruise missiles are really hard to count. There's so many of them, so many different variants, and it's very difficult to establish what is a nuclear-armed cruise missile and what is a conventionally-armed cruise, cruise missile. So we're not going to talk too much about cruise missiles in this segment. So there are five official nuclear armed states in the world under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and we're going to focus on those five in this segment. Starting with the Russian Federation, um, you can see that Russia has warheads that are sub-kiloton to one megaton in yield, and they have 8,500 total warheads, so it's a very large arsenal. The total destructive potential of the arsenal is an estimated 773 megatons. Russia has intercontinental ballistic missiles, about 313 of them, a wide range of medium-range systems, although almost all of these, in fact maybe all of them, are not um, really in a nuclear strike role at, at present, though they could be adapted to that role. And similarly, Russia does have a, a large bomber fleet, but again, not all of these bombers will be in the nuclear strike role. The Russian Federation also has 11 ballistic missile submarines, which deploy 112 submarine-launched 
ballistic missiles between them. So the Russian Federation has a big arsenal, and they have what is called a triad. They have an arsenal that is land-based, they have an arsenal that's air-based, and an arsenal that is sea-based. Here's the United Kingdom, and it's a bit of a contrast. The United Kingdom is an example of a nuclear-armed state that has placed all of its nuclear capability onto ballistic missile submarines. So they have four Vanguard-class submarines with 48 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. These are the Trident II D5 missiles. It's possible that Britain could adapt some of their bombers to carry nuclear weapons, but it doesn't appear that's in their plans at the present time. So this is an arsenal that's entirely built around ballistic missile submarines. The warhead yields, as you can see, are in the 100 kiloton range. They have 225 total warheads for a total of 21 megatons. Here's France. Um, warheads in the 100 to 300 kiloton range, a total of 300 warheads and an estimated total explosive uh, uh, power of 55 megatons in the arsenal. Again, it's an example of a nuclear armed state that has placed most of its weapons onto ballistic missile submarines, so they have four with 80 submarine launched ballistic missiles. France does have some bombers that could carry nuclear weapons, um, but they're not really optimized for that role, and it doesn't appear France actively deploys nuclear weapons on its bomber fleet at this time. Here's China. Um, the yield range of their warheads between 184 to 240 kilotons, a total of 250 warheads, but you can see that um, it, it's unlikely that China actually ha has its warheads deployed on its weapon systems. They seem to be stored separately, so they would go into this inactive category, and a total megatonnage of 294 megatons. Uh, China does have 72 ICBMs, a very large number of medium-range missiles, but most, if not all, of these will not be dedicated to a nuclear role at this time. Uh, they do have a large bomber fleet, but again, it's, it's highly questionable as to whether or not this bomber fleet is designed to carry nuclear weapons. And then the big question surrounds its ballistic missile submarine fleet. They have four submarines with 48 SLBMs, but there's a lot of question about the operational capability of those systems and whether they're actually um, fully operational at all uh, is, is in some doubt. Here's the United States. Um, so again, warhead ranges between sub-kiloton to 455 kilotons, a total of 7,700 warheads and about 535 megatons of explosive uh, power. Uh, the United States also has a triad, so they have ICBMs, 450 Minuteman III. They have bombers, 91, although not all of those are designed for the nuclear strike role. And then a fleet of 14 ballistic missile submarines. These are the Ohio-class submarines with 338 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. So again, the United States has a triad, land-based, air-based, and sea-based. And along with Russia, uh, the United States has um, the, is one of the two largest nuclear arsenals in the world. Okay, so in this segment, um, we looked at the five official um, nuclear armed straight states according to the Non-Proliferation Treaty. And you should now be familiar with the approximate number of nuclear warheads in these states and you should be familiar with the approximate number and type of delivery systems possessed by each of these states. Okay, now I'm not asking you to remember the specific figures, um, although I think it's really important that we have some sense of the numbers, both the warhead numbers and the delivery system numbers. To be conversant, uh, about nuclear weapons and global politics, I think you've got to have that context. You may not recall immediately to mind that the United States has got, you know, X number of bombers, but you should have a sort of a general idea. So when you're engaging in a conversation or a debate about nuclear weapons, you've got the basic knowledge to be able to do that. 
In the next segment, we're going to look at the nuclear arsenals of the so-called unofficial nuclear powers. So I'll see you then.